Welcome back, everyone, to the Foul Play. <coughs> We're going to take this advantage in between plays to look at our demon diary and see what we've learned about things so far. This book belongs to Death Heaven 13, so if you're not him, get the hell out. Anyway, there are all our advanced maneuvers, like the parry throw, the showstopper, the pile driver, which is awesome. I really like the parry flurry. And we just got the demonic charge. That. Concerning Daemons. Concerning Daemons or the Daemonologist Handbook, Chapter 1, Eustacia Lenkov, November 16, 1863. Eustacia, just two years to the day since the incident in Paris, and I fear I have warned the patience of our closest friends. For though there is sympathy, there is not belief. They smile, their patient smiles, and all the while think me a madman. Matters must be taken in my own hands. I will learn about these creatures. I will study every facet of their shadowed existence. And I shall hunt them, and they will pay for what they've done to you. P.S. Sebastian remains strong. He has your eyes, but I fear he has my temperament. I miss you every day. Aww. Chapter 2, A Night in Paris. It has a name. Parisians call it Old Jack Crow. In a small tavern in the shadow of the Bastille, they spilled stories of its reign of terror to me, with no mockery, only fear. I have rented a small studio. It overlooks the alleyway it emerged from, the alleyway where I lost you. I will watch, and I will wait. December 3rd. <laughs> Is it real, or am I mad? In the early hours of this morning, I woke with a start to discover my night candle extinguished. It crouched in the street across from me, pitch dark, even against the night, all but for its infernal eyes, which slowly turned to regard me in the window. I remember a distant screaming, my mind teetering on the edge of a precipice, and endless despair threatening to engulf me. Then I raised the flintlock pistol and fired. Uh, the first hunt. The next morning, I investigated the alleyway, finding a bundle of strange scales, feathers, from, and a thick trail of yellow ichor. My enemy bleeds. I dragged a passage to a cast iron manhole cover, then steeled myself before crawling into the extensive Parisian sewer system. Stumbling against unspeakable filth in the darkness, I eventually found its lair. The scale of its atrocity filled the floor, seeped from the walls, crunched into a fine dust under my hesitant fat steps. And I'll take that sight to my grave. It fell on me then, a hideous screaming flurry of feathers and claws. The flintlock spun from my grip in a hail of bites and scratches. A better man would claim to have thought of you, Eustacia, found strength through anger and divine retribution. All I could think of was not dying, not like this, not now. I fought and wrestled, tore and wrenched, and screamed until there was no more movement, no more sound. It was dead, and somehow I was not. Apparently that's all we get in that story. Okay. Well, we got the Hunter Journal. That was 1893. When's this? 1863. So this is 30 years later. April 29th, 1893. I've taken on an apprentice, and in doing so, I've once again outraged much of London's high society in the process. How on earth I would make a demonologist from one of their mu own newly pampered, idle, and otherwise entirely unremarkable spawn is a mystery. No, I have chosen someone I deem entirely capable. Master Scampwick Steer Spike. He begins tomorrow. Wait. This is supposed to be my father's journal. Yeah. I'm Sebastian Dashwood. Or Dathworth. Dashworth. Yeah. He does not know his letters. That can be taught. It must be if he is to understand the research. If he is to survive. He does know an awful lot about me. It seems there is knowledge not found in books, but through trust and intimidation, subtle whispers in the right places. I must learn to be more cautious. I asked why he wanted to learn, why he came to the estate, what he wanted. He simply replied to fight. I believe he has potential. My father long ago decided that a sturdy cane was always the best defense against demons. His reasoning was thus. Swords are too prone to melting or conducting unbearable levels of heat when facing hellfire demons. Guns, as above, he had heard horror stories of powder stores discharging prematurely when faced with infernal flames, often critically. My father never used a gun after the first incident in Paris, resolving they were too liable to fail if exposed to dank or waterlogged conditions. I took a carriage to a Maryfirth's cane emporium, where we spent an unsatisfying morning with Scampwick, rejecting each cane offered to him. I couldn't understand until I saw him spinning his sweeps brush back over his shoulder as we left, with an ease and familiarity to his gait I had not witnessed before. 
course, will require more modifications. We can strengthen the core, treating the exterior so it's resistant to heat and damp. I've drawn up the plans, and it will be a fine weapon. So, we have some monsters we've fought, our bosses. We have the foreman. Uh, Mr. Dashford said people act differently in foreign parts. Make no mistake, this fellow is proof. Well, this must be, uh, Sedgwick. He filed his teeth down to points. Now, where I grew up, people respected a good set of teeth. You could sell a tooth for a farthing on Chandlerswick Avenue. Dangers. Respect a man takes work his work seriously, even after being horrifically broken by a demonic entity from the nether regions. But those pickaxes were a bit tasty. When he gets a charge on, steer clear. I've seen freight trains with better brakes. Okay. Uh, General Kane. Everyone knows General Kane. He was on posters all over the place, getting lads to join up for the big ruck happening overseas. So he looks like that, except terrified. Ever so slightly mental. Dangers. Called me old-fashioned, but I can't help but feel more care should be taken with high explosives in a close conflict situation. Trust me, it's all fun and games till your cousin Frank's gone deaf and the orphanage is mysteriously burned down. I see cannons as very much an outdoor activity. Though I don't have any official army training, so could very well be mistaken. Either way, when in doubt, stay away from the end with the hole. Words to live by. And the claw demon. A distinguishing feature? I'd say the giant claw sticking out all over the place are pretty distinguishing. No surprises here on the dangers, it's the claws again. Turns out they're pretty good at violently slicing through pretty much anything. Just in case you manage to dodge the claws, he can also fire a beam of pure demonic rage out of his face, which you have to give the lad credit for. In the unfortunate event you do find yourself facing a greater demon as old as history itself, probably a good time to assess the important life decisions that led to this point, and think about what you might have done differently. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. This is this is a good book. Anyway, that's it for the intermission. When we return, we will be Dashforth, and we will be playing the Somerset Horror, the first act of the second play, where apparently there were werewolves and thrown enemies. Until then, 